Spider Fire Entertainment. <laughs> So I guess you have an idea what we're going to talk about? Yeah. Today's episode brought to you by... Spider Fire Entertainment. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is JT, and I like to collect toys. And if you like to collect toys too, well, then you came to the right place. I'm going to talk about something that I like. And as I grew up as a kid, one of my favorite, favorite shows was Gargoyles. I'd get up really early in the morning, I would watch it, and it borderlined getting kind of like creepy, but then Walt Disney always kept it under the, the kitty friendly. And so they did a really good job telling the story. And also my favorite characters that you see in Star Trek Next Generation were reprising their voices in a kid's cartoon. And it was almost a full cast, minus a few major characters. So one of my uh, recent finds, um, I pre-ordered Goliath here, and I usually pick up two items of each figure. Um, one to take out of the box, one to leave in the box. I kind of got into this mode where I would collect one to save for later, you know, just in case it increased in value, but, uh, you know, that proves to be quite costly when you start getting into NECA and a few other uh, expensive toy lines, and so I've kind of curtailed it, cut back a little bit, and uh, today we're just going to do an unboxing video on a couple of these figures. Uh, I have one in and one out. And uh, we'll start off with Goliath, and then we'll start with Bronx, because he has a, an accessory item that complements Goliath. And then Demona just came out today. Uh, I was able to pick up two of her, and then, oh my goodness, was that a Thalog? I swore I wasn't going to buy him. <laughs> After watching a couple of other people's videos about the Gargoyle Neckas, I realized that he is a full reuse from, from the Goliath. He's just a different color but a uh, different face out so I only picked up one of him and I'm really happy with the figure it's just that I don't want to you know why why pay double double <laughs> that's a double double and so I'll get a double and a single instead so anyway we'll get into opening uh, each figure and we'll go from there uh, but before we start I just wanted to show off a few other items that I picked up some of those items are a little vintage. Uh, up here we have some puzzles that I had picked up uh, on eBay some years ago. And those are big, giant jumbo puzzles. I have one there, and then also have one right over here. Those are pretty cool. And as most people do remember, they had the uh, toy line that came out. I have one of each character, but I only have a few on display right now. And then also the trading cards. Now, I have both inbox and loose, which are all in order. And there's really nothing special to collect about them other than if you just like gargoyles. And keeping company this little board game, I don't know what he got in the picture for, but he is so just so darn cute. Oh, you gotta watch it, man. He is a biter. So, uh, yeah, there's a few other things up here that I collected. Um, there's these shampoo bottles and Burger King cups. Uh, that is a mint condition, never been used before. Uh, heat sensitive uh, Burger King cup. And I have this, uh, this character here from The Witcher. I'm going to use him as a Macbeth for my NECA figures until they actually release a Macbeth. So, I just thought those were some cool items. Back in the day, they also came out with some comic books. And uh, some comic books hold the values, others don't. But uh, because they're in such a short run, most each of these comic books can fetch anywhere from about 5 to $50. Um, some of these are worth more than others. But uh, as the show, I think, is going to pick up speed in years to come, I think these will be collectibles even more so. And uh, this little guy over here is a custom-made Goliath that I had made when I was a little kid. And these um, were inspired by the cartoon. I loved it so much. Now, I had a pet bird. This is supposed to be the Eye of Odin. 
and I had a little stone that was glued in there, but uh, the bird went and uh, pecked that little stone off, and I was kind of sad. I, mean, I lost that stone. That, or he ate it, I don't know. But these are made from an old pair of shorts that I used to wear when I was probably about, oh, I don't know, 14? Something like that. So that's a little bit of my childhood right there. And then also cool little uh, books for kids. I think that's a pop-up book or a find me kind of thing. But anywho, we'll get into opening some boxes and I'll show you how some of these toys work. And uh, in the meantime, grab something to snack on. 10,000 years ago, superstition and the soul ruled. It was the age of darkness. It was the age of gargoyles. So again, one of the cool things about having two is that you can leave one in the box and then the other one take out for display. Uh, so I just kind of leave one for reference and then I'm going to pop this one open right here and kind of show you what he looks like. And so right off the bat, it's a clamshell. It has a little bit of Velcro on the top and the bottom here. And so you can actually keep it in the box and just open it up like a window. Uh, like a shadow box and then see all the cool accessories so it looks like let me get the glare off there uh, it comes with a little jalapeno because in the cartoon he referenced uh, how hot they were and uh, so I think it's the first time I ever heard jalapeno being called jalapeno for whatever reason he called it jalapeno but uh, I've always known it to be called jalapeno and then he also comes with a book that he reads. Now, I don't believe it's the book that they reference in the cartoon, uh, the one that has all kinds of uh, incantations and things like that. Uh, I believe uh, that book was left over here for Demona, and so the one that he's reading here is probably one that's found in the library above the police station. And so, uh, if you follow the cartoon, uh, he was learning how to read in order to kind of get an idea about the uh, way man thinks in today's world as they did <clears throat> a long time ago <clears throat> when he was in like Scotland or whatever so uh, then we move over here to Demona which is a really again another nice looking box uh, it also has little velcro strips and uh, on the inside uh, you have her it looks like this one comes with a face change that's really cool and uh, the other box here that I bought, uh, this one here, I, I left in the box for right now because I noticed that as uh, I opened her, uh, her face is down here. But they have these two little uh, nipples that go into the back of her head. And I guess something kind of jarred it loose. So it won't be too hard to fix, but I guess within the shipping, uh, I didn't bother to look. I didn't see that, uh, but I could have done it myself just by putting it in the bag. Uh, but anyway, I'll end up opening in that one in order to fix it, and then leaving this bottom one in the box just for looks. And then uh, the last one we have over here is Bronx, and as you can tell, he does come with a cool accessory. Uh, this is something that a lot of people were wanting with the uh, first release of Goliath, but were disappointed. Uh, he comes with this box with a huge, huge wingspan that probably goes a little over a foot. I don't know. I'm going to measure it. And then, anyway, it's just been complained that it is just too big. It doesn't fold. And it would have been nice to have him uh, have his cloaked wings. And so they, they really took that into the collector's um, consideration. And so they were able to fashion that. And I hope that they do that with all the rest of them because Demona has that. Every other gargoyle does that with their wings. So that would be kind of silly if they chose not to. But uh, who they're going to put those in with another box, we don't know. It could be smaller toys like, uh, say, Lexington. His wings don't need to be cloaked and he might come with another uh, set of wing cloaks for another character. So anyway, I thought that was just kind of cool to be able to open them without actually opening them. But uh, we are going to open them and uh, play with them a little bit. See how they bend and see how they twist. Alright, so I uh, dimmed the lights a little bit. 
turned on some of my cool stringers that I put up the other day and uh, have a little remote control I can change. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one I like the most. Uh, green is one of my favorites. It kind of reminds me of a uh, Borg setting if you were in a Star Trek Borg kind of mood. But uh, this purple is kind of cool too. And then uh, it just got everything on there. I just thought it was cool. So about 30 feet of that up on the wall. And uh, anyway, let's get back into doing what we were doing. So what I have is Goliath right here. And uh, with a Velcro, you pop them open just like that. But what we want to do is open them up. And I really like to keep this box in good shape. I mean, you're spending good money on a toy that comes with all this special packaging. Even though you might open it up, you want to take really good care of it. Uh, because, you know, you just... It seems like the right thing to do. I mean, look at that. It's still a nice looking box. So we'll set that aside. And, oh, okay. So two pieces. So it comes like this, and then it opens up, and then you have the wings that are in the back. See how large those wings are? Ooh, I really, I said earlier I wanted to measure them. Let me see if I have a measuring tape. Got a trusty little measuring tape right here. So we are going to look at these. And they are just about 11 inches. 11 inches, so just an inch shy of a foot. And you figure, well, that's 11 inches both ways. That's 22 inches wingspan. That's crazy, crazy wingspan. So as cool as it is to have a toy with a wingspan like that, if they don't break down, then for any collector, that is a space hog. Uh, so it's really nice that they came out with that Bronx figure that has uh, the cloak version of uh, Goliath's wings. Uh, it doesn't look like they really have them secured in there all that much, other than one little plastic band. Let's cut that off without cutting ourselves. Okay. I'm really excited about this. Um, I've been waiting for this toy for a very, very long time, and... Uh, I am very happy with the original one that I received when I was younger, but total improvement. I mean, this is just making it my age. This is for an adult. Anybody that spends $40 on their kid, God, man, I only have one. <laughs> that's going to add up. Okay, so there is some, like little tiny bands on the feet. I didn't see those. Uh, they did a really good job in adding it. So that's an extra piece of security. So we had a band around the waist and then a band around the feet. Now I just want them out. <laughs> out! Out! There we go. Holy moly moly. So let's get up close there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's see, focus. Try and get that. There he is. Got a really cool loincloth. Covers up, uh, yeah, covers up nothing. So they kept it clean. Very nice. Don't want to see nothing down there. Uh, the arms move really good. Of course, uh, I do understand that he's going to have some hand swaps. So he's going to have closed fists as well as open fists. And then a different expression on his face. He has a very calm face. And then he also has this really angry face, which I think is a really cool uh, add-on to any figure. Uh, his tail is huge. Let me pull that out. And it looks like it's like bendy material. Um, 
Some people like Bendy material. Uh, some people, like myself, really don't care for it. I've had Bendy toys in the past that break. But just don't bend them that much. So I'm going to pop his tail in. Oh. Okay, so give it a twist. And then it has a hinge on the tail, as well as Bendy. Bendy starts pretty much right at the tail all the way out. So you can, it looks like, curve this a little bit to how you like it. Anyway, let's get some of those wings on, man. Get some of those wings on. Uh, he's got a lot of hair. Uh, his hair is flexible, too. So that's a cool feature. And then uh, a really good uh, articulation in the uh, arms. They can do a full 360. And he's got some clutching abilities. Uh, he's not double... Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, wow. So his elbow is double-jointed there. So he's got a good... He can really bring those hands up and eat that jalapeno that he comes with. And uh, as far as articulation, his knee only goes up about that high. So he doesn't go all the way back. But uh, his, his legs are different than other people's legs. Cool. Let me get this in real quick. This is... I don't want to break it. Oh, so that really easily goes in, which means it might easily come out. All right. So look at that. The wingspan is so big that I can't even get it on the camera. I'll bring him back here. So anyway, big figure. He would hang uh, either really well off the ceiling I would have him coming down like that, probably off the ceiling. Put him on a shelf like this is not really what I want to do. Um, unless he's going to be like in the back and all the other ones have their cloaks on like, like this. But uh, anyway, that's cool. I really like this figure. I'm not going to really play with him right now, but uh, I just wanted to get him out of the box. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so we have the Bronx. That's the next one we're going to open up because he comes with the cloak that goes to the Goliath, and I like to take those wings off and uh, see what he looks like with the cloak on. So we'll do the uh, Bronx next, and uh, in the series of uh, gargoyles that came out, I believe it was Goliath, Thalog, Bronx, Demona, and if I'm not mistaken, it'll probably end up being Hudson and... Brooklyn next because I have my pre-orders already in at uh, uh, online toy store so we'll see which one comes to me first so on the top here there seems to be just one band of uh, tape which is great open that up packaging is slightly different than the other one I have like a mountain of a mountain of toys over here uh, for the doubles and then the empty boxes. Uh, it is also comes in two pieces. So you have the Bronx and then, oh, the kind of little rubber banded together. It's different than the other one. Let me see where this is taped together or something. Ah, oh, here it is. A little bit of piece of tape right here. So we'll cut that on both ends. I appreciate how safe they are trying to be with these. I know I've already said it, but the cost, you definitely want something that's going to be well cared for while in transit and packaging. That is cool. This is cool. Not only is this neat, uh, this is a whole other material than his other wings. So the other wings are hard, uh, like a resin hard, like a toy hard. This is like a flexi, flexi wing. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't end up doing something like this for all of them in their own packaging. Because this is so nice and smooth, uh, there wouldn't be any reason why they couldn't do a double pack. Um, th these boxes are already big enough as it is, so adding an inch, it wouldn't be so bad. 
So this is really cool, really flexible. Um, they should have done that with the first one, but then maybe adding bendy wire, and then they could have avoided this altogether. I don't know. I don't mind having both. I really love how it whips right down here. And then just looking at it from behind, this has such a really nice wing design. Um, you, you wouldn't even really fathom that in the cartoon. I mean, I guess somebody just kind of studied the bat wings and then decided that's how we're going to do it. So kudos to that dude. Oh, so instead of using some of the uh, plastic string wire, uh, this one is metal wire but it came off really easy. So we'll pull that off. Oh, he has another one. And that is the other wire we were cutting off. So these things are really packed in there pretty good. I should be using scissors instead of this razor, but I am pretty safe with this razor. Until I end up cutting myself, then we'll just look like a fool. Alright, so in the clam, he comes, looks like a piece of wood. I'm gonna say that's some kind of piece of wood, and then also a head change. So he has a calm head that's on him, and then this angry face, which is kind of like a tiger. Tiger growl. We'll let that fall on, fall on the ground. But that is just so cool. That is just gnarly. And you know, even if I only needed one, I would get two of this one. Uh, this kind of reminds me of the Ghostbuster dog. You know, those the evil demon dog. But uh, this Bronx right here is just so cool. He looks a lot like the cartoon. If he was to be brought to life in any shape or size, this is it. This is so cool. I'm going to have fun with this. And if they come out with a different colored one, I'd even buy it. You know, they can come out with a pink one and I'd buy it. Uh, looks like he's got a little wag to his tail. That's cute. I like that. He actually can wag his tail. And then he has some articulation here in the toes. And just like a dog, he has all the bendable parts. Um, also, too, his his arms can go wide out, and so can these. So, that's neat. Oh, and it fills. There's a soft plastic that goes around the body. So, in years to come, sadly, this may end up deteriorating. But he has a really soft plastic that feels kind of softer than this one that goes around his body. So he has skin texture on him. That is so neat. Which, if they did it with this one, they might end up doing with the other ones. So that is so cool. Uh, and the jaw, uh, does his jaw open? A little bit. So not, not a lot, but enough to have fun with it. So anyway, that's cool. That is cool looking. I like it. Next. Okay, so I took the uh, wings off of the Goliath, and I just slid this right over him, and uh, it looks pretty cool. It looks like how he would be if he had it wrapped around him. Uh, one complaint that I have about this particular figure is that his hair, unless I can figure a way to get his hair uh, over the little back flap right here, uh, there is a, a pretty deep v-line right here in the back of his wings which you would think his hair should be able to come up and over uh, and maybe i'm just not doing it hard enough I, i'm just with NECA toys because of the price point i don't want to put too much uh, unneeded pressure on unnecessary uh, points of articulation if need be i don't want to break it um, so anyway what it does though is the shoulders just seem a little high See how high it looks? It's almost like he's got high shoulders, but he doesn't. His shoulders are, at, are right where they need to be. It's just that the hair is pushing it up higher than it should. So if I were to put pressure on it, it would probably bring down the figure, you know, where it could be worn like it's supposed to. That looks a lot better. But as I let go, it just wants to come right back up. 
and that's where it sets comfortably on the figure. So I'm going to have to probably critique it a little bit. I mean, I want to take it on and off all the time, but I don't want them to look like that. So, hmm, hmm, we'll play with it. I got two. So open winged one, closed winged one. What am I complaining about, right? That is a really cool figure. Uh, take that off. That is a really cool figure. Uh, the detail on all of his muscles. Uh, I know watching some people on eBay, they've in the times past made some custom versions of Goliath or Thalog uh, using some Marvel Select figures like Blackheart. Uh, using his feet and uh, other bits and pieces and you know really great job uh, now that we have someone professionally making these mass producing them uh, we get better quality but that right there is pretty cool and uh, this isn't actually too far off from some customs that I've seen some really well done ones so uh, kudos to those guys out there uh, keeping it real and then making these guys step up so anyway Let's open up the next one. Uh, that's going to be the Demona one. And we said we were going to open the one where her face is off. So let's do that. Uh, the good thing about these boxes is I'm really picky about when I buy them. So when I got them, all of them were in mint shape. It's really hard to pick a box that you'd want to open because both of them are equally in good condition. One thing that I like to do when I'm shopping, and I know I'm going to open up a toy, uh, for other collectors, I will buy a damage. I'll buy a good one that I want mint, but then I will buy the damaged one that I plan on opening. Because if I bought two just to open and both were mint, well, that leaves some other poor guy out there that wants mint condition stuff, and he's not going to get it. So that's my kind deed, and that's all you get. Because it is a first come, first serve, people. <laughs> and uh, you better get to GameStop early in the morning before I get there. Because I got them on speed dial. And they got my number memorized. My One of my favorite shows is uh, Cheers. Because everybody knows your name. And when the Norm comes in, they all go, Norm! But when I go into GameStop, they all go, Justin! And then when I'm ready to pay... Uh, they know my phone number just by heart. It's it's pretty bad. Uh, it's I mean it's good. I like I like it, but it's bad that they know it because, well, they shouldn't. <laughs> they should be uh, pretty hard to remember somebody's number like that. But all of them know my number, so I'm in there quite a bit. Which reminds me, I should check my points. All right. Uh, these also have the safety bands on them. Make sure people aren't stealing, I guess. I wouldn't want to even attempt trying to get these out. Any other, any other reasons, conditions. They're hard enough to get out. Oh my goodness. I know in a couple of my stores, uh, Targets and Walmarts, uh, we're experiencing head swapping. Whoever's out there swapping heads... They're taking Power Ranger toys and swapping heads with Marvel Legends and Black Series because uh, Hasbro owns all of those and they use the same body types and so they're all compatible. And uh, it's disappointing when you get there and you want to buy a toy and the head's not the person that you want it from. So she came out a lot easier. Uh, I dropped a head. Let me find that real quick. All right. Well, we had to get down on our knees and turn on the lights because uh, that was a little piece of a head, and uh, it's easy for that to get lost. So, um, also something else I noticed while I was opening this case is that there's this little bit of flaking um, of paint. It's pretty crispy. Let me see if I can get that on camera. Anyway, something on my finger right there. They're, they're little pieces of uh, paint flakes. Anyway, don't know where those came off of, but they came out of the case. So I hope that's not going to be a problem. 
because uh, NECA does have an issue and uh, I'll point it out and this is pro so whoever's listening better do something about it uh, it was the Phantom and I believe the Ming from Flash Gordon and Flash Gordon figures those NECA figures the paint jobs uh, the paint comes right off on the joints it was just oh oh and it bends pretty easy uh, those those toys I wouldn't recommend them right now not until they come out with a second series of those toys but their uh, painting of them looks great it's just not a really good version of it man her let's just say it's hard to get it up there uh, also too what I like about this is they kind of gave a uh, circle out of the loincloth so that the tail can come right up and in it that's different but I'm also, uh, ooh, I got paint on the tail just by trying to shove it in there. So let me try that a little bit softer. Oh, there it goes. I guess that's what it takes. So anyway, put a little bend in the tail. That would be kind of cool. You probably get a better bend, but uh, let's get some wings on her and a face. Uh, a cool thing about these faces is that the earrings are actually little dangly metal earrings. That is cool. And they're on both heads. And then she actually has a metal ring. It's not plastic. It's metal on her ankle, which is pretty cool. And uh, it's not metal on her arm because she had an arm bracelet. So that's one spot they decided not to. For this video, by the way, I searched high and low. I have a Phoenix Gate that I purchased a long time ago from someone who does custom uh, props for cosplay and whatnot. And I was searching and searching for the for the uh, Phoenix Gate. I wanted to have it in this video. Uh, it, I have it hiding somewhere. I, I got stuff everywhere, and during the transition of moving. I had there's a few places it could be but I'll find it and the, and the reason why I wanted it and, and have it in this video is because because of this show I've always memorized a couple of things that they've had it uh, mentioned uh, in there and and I don't know if it's real Latin or not but uh, testa grate more tempe erectivaria and I believe that's what would cause uh, Goliath or Demona to travel through time using the Phoenix Gate which is not an accessory item for any of these two figures so I would think that maybe they may, keep, they may come out with a, a Magus in the future I mean he didn't have a big part to play but he, he was a part of the, uh, the events that led to them uh, being where they ended up Oh, her wings are also very uh, stiff, like Goliath's. Again, she doesn't have her cloaked version of wings, but these are hard, like uh, Goliath's were. And just gotta get them in there. Her hair's in the way. There we go. All right. I got like this snapping and that, that's typical from what I understand um, in other videos that I've seen where someone has done a review on these uh, her wings are really loose uh, mine seem to be stiff so we got a good one and I'm really happy about that and so oh her head on the other hand uh, obviously pops off pretty easy So there should probably have been maybe a magnetic would have been cool. I mean, if they're going to go with a the metal, they could have done a magnetic face. But that is really cool. I, I, I like this figure, too. I don't think I'm going to be very disappointed with anything that NECA is going to do in the Gargoyle line. So uh, that's cool. We'll move on to the last one, and uh, that was the Phalog figure. Pause. 
All right, so on to the last and final figure, and then we'll just kind of do an overall of the, all the figures, all four of them. Uh, this one is, again, the reuse of the Goliath figure. Oh, let's just open him up, because we didn't really give him a good opening. So, again, the artwork is uh, really awesome. kind of do it on all the sides. That's why I like to take care of these. So anyway, we'll take him out. It's like shoe boxes. <laughs> They're just like huge boxes. There he is. And then the back, just like Goliath and Demona, they come with the wings. So it looks like he comes with uh, some kind of gun that uh, has a protruding bullet or missile something. That's different. I would have expected him to have a big gun, kind of like how Demona has a big gun, because she has two big guns. So here she is, like half his body size, and she has bigger guns than he has. So what I'll probably end up doing is uh, taking one of her guns and giving it to him uh, or finding something from one of my other uh, toy lines. Um, sometimes some of these other McFarlane toys that come out, they have pretty good universal figure weapons. All right. He also has little plastic uh, ties on the legs and on the arms. You uh, don't really know very much about ah, gargoyles. Phalog uh, is actually Goliath spelled backwards, and what he is is a clone that was uh, taken from Goliath's blood. Uh, all the clones ended up having uh, defects; they weren't perfect, but uh, they—I believe they did survive. I can't remember. Oh man, I can't remember. But I do remember uh, they weren't. Oh, I can't remember. I gotta watch it again. Uh, I have all of them, but they're not legit copies. <laughs> they're uh, they're personal library copies. And I was able to download. So he has a pretty good long tail. Also, they got the little hole in the butt. Last time I twisted, huh? Twist. Twist. There he is. Now he's locked in. And now he's like sad. And then he's like excited. Or he's mad. Sad. Mad. Uh, what I also like to point out is he comes with a briefcase. Uh, I don't believe this briefcase is going to open. But, uh, oh, also these weapons are. The hands are not glued in or taped in, but this big giant, uh, giant projectile missile smoke is. That's pretty big. Uh, this is going to come in handy for pretty much anything else that I got, uh, especially any Mandalorian weapon that I have uh, in my... Uh, collection right now. I have a couple of Mandos, and this would be really cool. It, ugh, that is so neat. I wouldn't mind actually having two of these, but I said I was only going to buy one Thalog just because I would like to have one for uh, his jetpack, or his, uh, or even, uh, dude, I don't know. I'm going to have to take a look at his jetpack. I can't remember if he has one exhaust or two. Mm, let's just say this one. If it's one, we're safe, and this is going to be cool, because then this will be the base and this will be him taking off off the ground. Uh, that's what I'm going to use this for. Either a Mandalorian or a Boba Fett. Or a Jango Fett. Or a Death Watch. I don't really care. That can go a long way. Uh, I'll even go on eBay and see if anybody's selling theirs. So it comes with this cool little briefcase, which opens... 
It opens to show money. Lots of it. Money and a key ring of keys. That is pretty cool. Uh, this is going to go good with any other toy line as well. Uh, that is neat. I like those kinds of things. So let's get the hands and put them aside. Put the weapon aside. And we'll take these wings and snap them out without breaking them. I'm so afraid of breaking anything right now. Okay, here we go. And uh, I'm sorry, I would have played some music, but I don't want to infringe on any copyrights. Oh dear. Nope, don't want to do that. And I'm not a really good whistler or singer, so I wouldn't uh, plague you with anything so cruel. Oh, but I can. What I can do... Here. I can give you louder ambient noise from my fan. <laughs> All right. So, oh. Ah. No. All plastic. All plastic, people. We're safe. We're safe. That could have been my fault. Alright, well, hopefully that wing doesn't come back out. But he also has extremely wide wingspan. Again, 22 inch wingspan. Uh, he's also pretty cool. Uh, the eyes, uh, I looked at the eyes while I was uh, opening the box, and <sighs> I can't say that I'm too happy with the eyes. But uh, anything's better than nothing, so I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it for the win. All right. So anyway, let me get them all together, and we'll show them all lined up. Okay, so we got uh, Goliath here. He is uh, in his cloaked, winged accessory uh, here with uh, Bronx, who is uh, not having a good day. It looks like he is looking right at Demona for being such a traitor. And then probably not even know what to think about Thalog there. Because he looks like Goliath, but he's not Goliath. Uh, so anyway, you got two against two. But this seems like an uneven uh, matchup to me. So I'm really looking forward to when I get a Hudson. Or when I get a um, Brooklyn. Or even a Broadway. Uh, on the back of some of these we'll see that uh, some of these figures are due to come out soon uh, Lexington there's all the other ones yeah Brooklyn Hudson Broadway collect them all so that means they're gonna be hitting the stores pretty soon now and the uh, I bought all my other ones at Target uh, the Goliath I did get from Big Bad Toy Store uh, only because that is a guaranteed good place to get toys and not have to worry about your pre-orders getting canceled uh, so anyway, these other ones though were in the rough, and that's pretty good, seeing that I got um, five out of the uh, seven figures that I have uh, out in the wild, and in pretty good shape too. So anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed the uh, first uh, PO, or not PO, but uh, first unboxing video that we did today. And uh, really looking forward to doing a few more. Uh, I have a couple other toys that are lined up. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy.